Now, when we come to do hypotheses testing on the Poisson distribution, it's very, very similar to the process that we use for hypotheses testing on the binomial. Okay, um, just obviously working with a different distribution, so we get a lambda value that's going to be tested, um, and but much of the rest of the procedure uh, is the same. So we've got a lambda value that's being tested. We've got a bit of evidence that we've found. Um, to, as our test statistic, we've got our significance level. So in this first example, we set up our null and alternative. Um, make sure you use the right symbols. So, so for a Poisson, null and alternative hypotheses are set up in terms of lambda. Check the time period as well. Check you're working with the right time period for the question. Um, okay, so X follows a Poisson distribution with a lambda value of 7.5. Our bit of evidence that we've collected was 13. So we work out the probability of the evidence or worse. Again, note that the inequality sign used here always takes the same direction as the alternative hypotheses. We can pick that off from our calculator so we get our probability value, compare with the significance level as usual, and conclude in the context of the question. So very, very similar to what we did with the binomial distribution, um, but um, just the same process, different distribution. Next example, um, just got to be a little bit careful here. We're given um, a mean of 2.25 per week, um, but we are the evidence that we've collected is for a four-week period. Okay, so we must adjust our lambda value for the time period for which we've collected the evidence. So first of all, when you're setting up your null and alternative hypotheses, make sure you adjust your lambda value. Um, on this occasion, whether or not there is uh, a change, so therefore the alternative hypothesis is a not equal to. Um, so lambda nine Poisson set up and null and alternative hypothesis set up a two-tailed uh, 5% significance test. Okay. So our evidence is 6. We would be expecting 9, so we go for less than or equal to as our inequality. You always go for the evidence or further away from what you would expect. So less than or equal to, pick up your probability then uh, from your calculator, and then you just need to compare it with half the significance level because it's a two-tailed test. And again, on uh, well, on this occasion, uh, there is sufficient evidence. Um, this probability is smaller. Small probabilities cause us to reject hypotheses. So we reject H0 and then comment in the context of the question. And here in example three, looking at finding the critical region for the test rather than actually performing the test. Again, be careful with the time period. Okay, uh, two hour time period. This was quoted as five per hour. So adjust lambda to 10 in our null and alternative hypotheses. Okay, um, we are looking, testing for an increase. So our alternative hypothesis is greater than. So to find the critical region for the test, we are looking for um, the value of C where the probability that X is greater than or equal to C dips below our significance level. So um, from the tables or from trial and error on your calculator, uh, if we look at the values nearby, you'll see that greater than 15 gives us 0 0.8, 0 0.08, uh, and greater than 16 gives us 0.08. Four, eight. So this one does fall below. Uh, that's the one that we want. Um, and therefore, your critical region for the test is uh, x is greater than or equal to 16. Okay, that's your critical region. When you're doing these questions, make sure you show um, the calculation of the values both sides. So show the one that is just above and show the one that is just below as part of your working. Um, that's requ a requirement um, in these questions to show that working. 